well, thank you for coming to me and Harrison the other day. You know, people have been obviously pretty vocal about this with the issue, and, and uh, you know, we felt like we gave a fair both sides this hearing the other day. And uh, so I want to thank you for coming. Uh, so explain me, your group blockchain uh, and your cryptic farms was behind this legislation. That's correct, right? 1799? Um, in terms of being behind the legislation, we supported it. Um, the language came from uh, a federal group known as the Satoshi Action Fund, which attempted to pass and successfully pass similar legislation in other states. Um, we supported the language of the bill. We didn't, um, we didn't write it. Um, we didn't contribute to it in that sense, but it had a full support. But it was a Rose Law firm that I mean, there was an Arkansas business article or something like that that the Rose Law Firm was one that was the primary drafters of that. Was that correct or something like that? No, Rose Law Firm did not uh, <coughs> draft uh, the language as far as I know. They represent um, Blockchain Council in terms of okay. you know, incorporating our entity and uh, providing legal advice, but they don't, we're not associated with the language. And you're part of this group, Satoshi, I believe the name of it is, and it's a national group that's trying to do, you have a board member, or one of the board members is on your board or something like that? Yeah, I'm not a member of the Satoshi Action Fund, um, but um, we do have a board member who is a, a policy expert who worked at various institutes, um, you know, with the economic growth forum and others, who is on the board of the Institute. Okay. But you were part of this, uh, at least the legislation watching it through. You have the lobbyists that is monitoring the situation. So, I mean, so yeah, we, no one else knew about it. I mean, but you were part of it. We did fully support that legislation. Yeah, and, and I understand, you know, you want to do the blockchain, but as in Harrison, I say, you know, I'm a cattle and uh, poultry uh, farmer. You know, we don't, the Cattle Association does not get inside the bad actors in that farm bureau. So I kind of have an issue with, uh, you know, this analogy. So I'm going to point that out. The other thing is, too, you keep talking about bad actors, bad actors, bad actors through this whole. It's very important, as you've said, that bad actors are uh, very important to this process to make uh, right. You, you've been clear about the bad actor part, right? Mm -hmm. So why didn't you put bad actors and in, in their bad actions in the legislation in the beginning? Well, it's not up to incumbent on me to put anything in the legislation. I didn't write the legislation. Um, so. I think that that's something for legislative bodies to address, and we support any regulations uh, that you enact. Um, in terms of you know self-regulating, I would just say that, uh, just to clarify, we don't view what the council does as um, authoritatively self-regulating. Um, we're trying to set guidelines that we approve of, that we consider good standards, um, whatever it's enacted into law legislatively in terms of regulation that is aligned with that we fully support. Um, as I said earlier, I, I believe um, if legislatively all the standards that we articulate to become members of the council got enacted into law, then I wouldn't, um, wouldn't be incumbent upon us to actually pursue that. And so we don't consider it uh, a right or a privilege to to do this sort of self-regulating, it's just that we have two options. We can either um, do nothing to um, pass standards for the industry, um, or we could set standards that we think are best practices, and we chose the latter. Well, I mean, in this field, let's look 